Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Again, we are in our uh, Gematria series. Tonight we're going to be dealing with the number um, 30, again the letter Delamed. Now, the letter Lamed is the tallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It has a numerical value of 30. It is composed, basically, if you write it, of two letters, a Chaf and a Vav. Again, Chaf is a numerical value of 20, Vav 6, together 26, which is the numerical value of the name of God of mercy, the yud Ke vav Ke, the ineffable name we don't mention. It symbolizes the king of kings, the supreme ruler. There are those who see the Lamed as composed not of two letters, but of three, with the yud on top, uh, again, which has numerical value of 10, which would then give it a, the Lamed a numerical value of 36. This would be an allusion to the twice- the Gematria Chai of life, which is 18. Life in this world and life in the next world. It is bordered on either side by letters of the alphabet that, that allude to this fact. The Chaf, which stands for Kisei HaKavod, the throne of glory. And the Mem, which stands for the attribute of Malchut, which is kingship. These three letters together spell the word Melech, which in Hebrew means king. Their numerical values descend from Mem, which is 40, Lamed, which is 30, and Chaf, which is 20. 40, 30, and 20 equal 90, alluding to the fact that God's MS, truth, represented by the letter 9, as we've mentioned before, is found in all 10 attributes that God has taken upon himself when he created the world. Again, 9 times 10 is 90. It descends into this world of the Olam, through the process of contraction. Now, the word Lamed <clears throat> is related to the word Lomad, which refers to both learning and teaching. God has endowed man with the ability to learn and the obligation to teach. In fact, the word Lamed, Lomad, is an acronym for Lev Maven Das, a heart that understands wisdom based on Osius Rabbi Akiva. Now, the gematria, the numerical value of this phrase of Lev Maven Dat is 608, which equals 32, the number, the gematria of the word Lev, which is heart, times 19, which is the numerical value of the name Chava. So 32 times 19 is 608. The Ibn Esra states that Adam, first man, is the secret of the brain, and Eve, Chava, the secret of the heart. Now, the first letter in the Torah, of the written Torah, is Bez, Bereshit. And the last is a Lamed from the word Yisrael, Israel. Together, they together spell the name Lev, which is heart. And backwards, the word Baal, master. One should be the master of his emotions rather than have his emotions be the master over him. The letter Lamed alludes to the word lev, again, as I mentioned, heart. It is the 12th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, of the 22 letters, in the center of the alphabet, which is an allusion to the heart. And just as the heart sustains the body, so too does heartfelt learning of Torah sustain the soul. Now, the word lamad does not appear in the Torah until the last book of the Torah and the book of Devarim. Devarim is referred to as Mishnah Torah, a review of the Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, gave this book over to the children of Israel 36 days before his death as a final review of all the laws that he had taught them over the 40 years that he led them in the desert. In fact, the word Ve'ela, again, has numerical value of 36. Now, the word Lamed, for that was the first word in the book of Devarim, the word Lamed is also connected to the word Melamed Habakar, which is a cattle goad, a tool that is used to make an animal move. And so too, Torah study is not the ultimate goal. It is the information that we need to transform our learning into action. As stated in Pirkei Avot, chapter 1, verse Meshna 17, Reb Shimon ben Gamliel said, Belo ha-medrash iker ela ha it's not the study which is primary, but it is the action. Again, we live in the world of Asiya, of action. The Talmud states that when one wishes his friend farewell, 
He should say, Lech l'shalom. Go to peace, and not Lech b'shalom. Go in peace. We learned this out from the Torah, where Moshe Rabbeinu left his father's house, father-in-law's house, Yisro. And he said, Yisro said to Moshe, Lech l'shalom. With the Lamed, two, and he was successful. When King David, when Dovin Melch said farewell to his son Avshalom, he blessed him with the words, Lech Bishalom, in peace, and Avshalom was home. The Lamed is the largest letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and the Yud is the smallest. The word Yisrael, Israel, begins with the Yud, the smallest, and ends with the Lamed, the largest. This is an allusion to the fact that though we may be the smallest of all nations in number, but we are the largest in worth. In Pirkei Avot, it says that Malchut, kingship, is acquired with 30 attributes. The name Yehuda, Judah, the tribe from where royalty originated through the family of Dov and Amalek, King David. Yehuda has a numerical value of 30. Also, the middle letter of the word Melech, king, is also a Lamed, again, the miracle value of 30, alluding to that, the attributes of the king. There are 30 days in a solar month, and the Medrash connects the 30 days of the month to the 30 generations of Jewish souls, beginning with Avinu, Abraham, our father, and concluding with King Yushayal, who immediately preceded the destruction of the first temple. If one vows to give a gift to the temple, based on the value of an adult woman, the standard amount would be 30 shekel. The female menstrual cycle is 30 days. There are 30 tzaddikim, righteous individuals in every generation in whose merit the world stands. Now the first time we see the number 30 in the Torah is in connection with Adam, first man, as it says in Breshit, chapter 5, verse number 3, where it states, and Adam lived 100 and 30 years, and he begot a son in his own likeness after his image, and called him Shes, Seth. In Pirkei Avot, chapter 5, Mishnah 21, it states that 30 years old is the age for full strength. 30 years old was a stage, was the age at which a Levite began his service in the temple, which included carrying heavy burdens. In Bamidbar, chapter 4, verse number 47, it says that Joseph was 30 years old. Pardon me, that was, that was the previous thing. It says Joseph was 30 years old when he became the viceroy of Egypt. In Vayeshev, chapter 41, verse number 46. And David Amalek, King David, was 30 years old when he began his reign over the children of Israel. And he ruled for 40 years. In Kisaitse, chapter 21, verses 10 through 13, is where the Torah discusses the Ashes Yifat Toar, the beautiful captive woman. It states there that he must bring her into his house for 30 days, and after that period of transition, if he still desires her, he can marry her. In the portion of, portion of Mishpatim, chapter 21, verse 32, it states that if an ox gores a manservant or a maidservant, the owner of the ox shall pay the master of that slave 30 shekels of silver. That is regardless of the actual worth of the slave, whether it's more or less. The minimum duration of a Nazarite, one who has taken a vow to keep away from the dead, from drinking and from cutting his hair, is 30 days. The length of a nidoy, of a banishment, also was 30 days. The customary period given by a court to execute its orders was 30 days. A brother-in-law who was given, was given 30 days to consummate his relationship with his recently widowed sister-in-law in a Leverite marriage, again, where the husband, the brother, did not leave any children. If a husband made a vow that his wife may not derive any benefit from his house for 30 days, he then becomes obligated to divorce her. A loan that is given without a specific time frame is deemed to extend for 30 days. A wholesaler was obligated to clean his liquid measures, measuring utensils, again, every 30 days. 30 days before a holiday, one is obligated to begin studying its laws. If one leaves his house 30 days before Pesach, Passover, 
and will not return until after the holiday, he is not obligated to search his house for chametz, for leaven. If he leaves within 30 days, then he has an obligation to search. 30 days after Erev Pesach, when the lamb was sacrificed in the temple, an opportunity was given to those who for any reason were not able to bring the Paschal offering on Erev Pesach at its, its proper time to make up for having missed it. It is called Pesach Sheni, the second Passover. The festival of Purim always falls 30 days before Pesach. It's customary to begin spiritual preparations for the high holidays 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. This begins with the advent of the month of Elul, the final month in the Hebrew calendar. People traditionally take on various ritual practices, including recitation of special prayers and psalms, and also the sounding of the shofar daily in the month of Elul. A pidyon aben, the redemption of the firstborn son, becomes an obligation on the father when his son reaches 30 days old. If a child does not live 30 days, Rahman al it is considered to be in the category of a nafal, of a miscarriage. After the shiva, the seven-day period of mourning, the next stage is referred to as the shloshim, the 30 days. When one meets a friend that he has not seen for 30 days, he recites the blessing of Shechianu, Higianu, Bismana who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this occasion. There is a special blessing that one recites when visiting a cemetery that is said only once every 30 days. Asher Yotzer Eschem Badin, who has fashioned you in judgment. One who moves into a new house is obligated to put up a mezuzah only after he's been there 30 days. That's when the obligation kicks in. The matzah, that leavened bread, unleavened bread that the Jews brought with them when they left Egypt, lasted miraculously for 30 days. They were able to experience the taste of the man, that spiritual food that fell in the desert for the 40 years in that matzah. After the death of Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, the man no longer fell. And the last month that did fell lasted 30 days until the Jews were able to enter the promised land and eat from its produce. In the desert, the Jews complained to Moshe that they had no meat to eat. And God heard their complaint and brought them quail that went for 30 days. But it was not a good thing. The Moran Chulun 110b states also that a borrowed coat is for the first 30 days exempt from the, command, from the midst of the commandment of putting on tzitzit, the fringes. Morimako says when one lends his friend money without specifying a date for repayment, in such a case the lender may not demand repayment of the debt for at least 30 days. The Rambam states that the size of a regular Torah scroll should be 17 fingers long. 17 is the gematria of the word tov, good. In addition, every line should be long enough to contain a minimum of 30 letters. Morgan Subas 19b states that an unfit Torah scroll must either be repaired or stored away in 30 days. The Gemara Bab Metzia 29b, the Mishnah states that if one finds scrolls, he must read them every 30 days. If he can't read, then may at least roll them out once every 30 days. A priest may not let his hair grow for more than 30 days without trimming it, whereas a Nazir, a Nazarite, must let his hair grow for at least 30 days. The priest's hair is temporary, whereas a Nazir's hair is permanent. The prophet Yonah, the famous story of Yonah and the whale, told the residents of Nineveh that God would destroy the city in 30 days if the people did not repent. There are also 30 species of fruit trees. Now the Lamed is the highest letter in the Hebrew alphabet and according to the Shalah HaKadosh, represents peace, which may be the reason that the last letter in the five books of the Torah ends with the Lamed, Yisrael. May God bless us with eternal peace and with the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you so much for coming. Hope you enjoyed that. Shabbat Shalom.